What up, ReZero? Today we got Arc 6, Chapter 75, titled Brui Arneb. Yes, if you've been keeping track of the way things are going, it may have been pretty obvious to you that this chapter would have exactly that title. So, this chapter is obviously all about Brui, or Louis, Louise, however you wish to incorrectly pronounce her name, but to recap things really quick, Subaru regained his memories by reading his own Books of the Dead, and he ends up going back to the Corridor of Memories and having a conversation with his clone. Then we realize that Amnesia Subaru was actually Rui Arnab this whole time, and the chapter ends with Subaru asking if she got to see everything she wanted to see. This chapter, Chapter 75, is basically the answer to Subaru's question, and a lot of questions that fans have regarding Rui Arnab's Sin Archbishop representing Gluttony. Now, the chapter starts us off with Rui's words. Words, I want to be happy. These words are repeated often throughout this chapter, and right off the bat we learn an interesting fact. Rui was born here in the Corridor of Memories. It goes on to say that Rui was also trapped here, and she's unable to leave. Very interesting. It continues saying that Rui has no real body, she's only a consciousness. She's never walked before, yet she has memories of walking because of her two brothers who've basically been feeding her memories of their victims. After seeing the memories of others, she realized how depressing her life was. She also understood that no matter how sad she became, there's still nothing she can do about it from inside the corridor. Her two brothers, Lei and Roy, tried to cheer her up by eating people for her, and they actually competed with each other in order to find the perfect dish to satisfy their sister. Lei Batten Kados, representing the gourmet aspect of gluttony, searches for special lives full of rich, seasoned memories. Roy Alford, on the other hand, instead gave priority to the quantity rather than the quality of the memories. To Rui, Lei's meals tasted better, but Roy's were more filling. As she ate more and more meals given to her by her brothers, she learned more and more about what true happiness was. She began to compare lives to one another and even created a point system where she'd grade people on if they were in love or not, how rich they were, how good their relationship was with their family, etc. She kept score and basically made a fucking tier list for all these people's lives. This entertained her for a while, but she got bored fast. She wanted to be able to critique the present or the future, but instead all she could see was the past. Another thing, the memories didn't feel as if she was living them, it was more like she was an observer, forced to watch someone else's gameplay. To Rui, this began to feel more like torture than boredom. The first section of this chapter concludes with Rui realizing that it isn't hunger that her body needs, but her Now this bleep you heard is actually a certain kanji that's been blocked out a lot in recent chapters. It's pretty obvious at this point if you've been reading, but it's heart. Rui is hungry not by her body, but by her heart. Later in Rui's life, she developed the ability to take control of her brother's bodies. Finally, she was able to walk around and breathe the air herself, even if she was using someone else's body. This also allowed her to actually meet her brothers for the first time. She was delighted at first, but much like greed, gluttony is insatiable. Gluttony plagues Rui with a constant desire to find happiness, but even when she finds it, the desire still remains. Even beautiful flowers shall wilt. Why must the flowers wither? Are even the beautiful memories shared between people destined to wane? In the words of Omega, ah, why must love fade? That's uh, that's from the appendix of Arc 4, if you don't already know. Um, yeah, that, that's my favorite line in the entire web novel. So anyway, yeah, she was able to do that because her authority changed. Because her authority changed, Lei and Roy's authority changes too. Lunar Eclipse brings out skills and knowledge from another person's memory while Solar Eclipse literally reproduces that person's existence, granting you access to almost all of their abilities. Now, obviously Solar Eclipse is way fucking better, but Lei and Roy are scared to use it because it makes them feel like they're someone else. And that feeling like you're someone else is what Rui has to live with 24-7. All Rui wants is to be herself, but that's impossible for her, so instead she has to be someone else. And the only way for her to happily be someone else is if that someone has the perfect life. Remember that throughout this chapter, she's repeating, I want to be happy. That perfect life is what she thinks can make her happy. So naturally, when she meets Subaru, her chest screams. It, it literally says that, her chest screams. She's absolutely intrigued by Subaru because when he first shows up in the Corridor of Memories. Rui immediately knows who he is because of Rem's memories. 
She tries to strike up a conversation with him, but all his dialogue's blanked out for some unknown reason. Rui wants to find out more about Subaru, so she peers into Rem's memories for a second. Immediately, she's suffocated by love overflowing through her chest. The love for the boy in front of her is infinite. Rem's love for Subaru is so powerful that it even alters Rui's speaking mannerisms and cause her to refer to him as Subaru-kun. So to Subaru, it seems like Rui is making fun of Rem by mocking her, and this pisses Subaru off and causes him to attack her, obviously resulting in failure. Rui is surprised and asks Subaru why he remembers Rem. This is what sparks her interest in Subaru. She learns that he can bypass the authority of gluttony by remembering people whose names have been eaten. Someone like that must have a life worthy of tasting. She licks his neck and says his name and hits him with that itadaki mas and eats his fucking memories and after that Subaru's just like, yo, what, what'd you just do to me? And that makes Rui go crazy. She just ate his memories, but he didn't lose them. Just to confirm that everything works, she tries to peer into Subaru's memories and it works. She has his memories and she starts looking through them when suddenly she stops. Um, Subaru. Why do you have memory of your own death? Rui freaks the fuck out. She just found someone who can remember their own death, and she starts to theorize that maybe he's the Sin Archbishop of Pride. She starts talking about Betelgeuse and witch factors, etc, etc, and Subaru's responding to her this whole time, but as I said, his dialogue is all blanked out, which sucks. But anyway, she's still super impressed that Subaru has the memory of death. With the power to return by death, you could get rid of bad things and failures, is what she's thinking. You could live the perfect life. And that's when she decides that she wants the power for herself. After seeing through Subaru's memories that he was able to steal Betelgeuse's authority, allowing him to use Unseen Hand, she starts brainstorming ways that maybe she could steal Subaru's return by death. She explains that she can divide herself in the same way the three great witch beasts can, and then she duplicates herself and transfers her soul into Subaru, using him basically as a container. She looks at him and once again feels overwhelming love for him, the source of which is obviously Rem's memories, when she decides that Rem's feelings are ridiculous so she peels Rem's memories out of her and throws them away. She felt that Rem's memories and even all the other memories were useless to her now that she finally found Subaru the perfect life, but she only throws away Rem's. So I, I think this is how Rem was able to appear in the Stand Up chapter. Rui peeled Rem's memories out and threw them, so now Rem's soul is just kind of wandering around the corridor of memories, I guess? I'm not sure. But anyway, she basically eats Subaru from the inside to become him, and now she's Subaru, right? And she can use Return by Death. As he's being eaten, he blurts out some kind of warning, but again, it's blacked out. So Rui is now Amnesia Subaru, and the real Subaru is trapped in the corridor, basically just waiting for Rui to come back. Yes, that means that the main character of Arc 6 has been Rui this whole time. It's also not yet explained exactly why Rui lost her own memories. Perhaps since they were created in the corridor, they aren't able to leave, I'm not sure. But we're back to the present finally, and once again Subaru asks her, Did you see everything you wanted to see? Rui snaps back to reality and regains consciousness, looks around at her surroundings, you know. She tries to respond to Subaru, but finds herself screaming instead. I don't want to die, I don't want to die, she says. Apparently, death wasn't as bad when it was just a memory. Even if the body is hungry for death, the heart doesn't want to die. Actually experiencing death seems to have traumatized her. Rui always thought that her wish was to be happy and find a perfect life, but this experience taught her that life is dangerous and actions of consequences, some of which can be death. So instead of wishing for the perfect life now, Rui wants to avoid death. Her goal has changed from I want to be happy to I do not want to die. Subaru reveals that while she was eating him, he tried to tell her that death is horrible, but she didn't listen. Now she's afraid and pathetic, having a mental breakdown, and as she rolls around on the floor crying, she utters the last sentence of this chapter. I definitely regret it. Yeah, that's goddamn right you do, bitch. So let's see, what did we get out of this chapter? Well, for one, Rui has been defeated, alright? That's basically it for Gluttony. Her mind's destroyed, her personality, goals, everything about her's been changed, and Subaru defeated Glut- or I guess Gluttony kinda defeated themselves, now that I think about it, but all that's left for Gluttony is Subaru to take her witch factor, pretty much. 
Another important thing in this chapter, Rem's eaten memories were peeled out of Rui. Rui was annoyed at Rem's love for Subaru, so she threw her memories in the corridor. This happened in the corridor, so Rem must be somewhere in the corridor, right? Am I missing something here? That, that was why we saw Rem in the stand-up chapter. She's here somewhere, and I think Subaru will find her in the coming chapters, maybe even the next one. So, this is big. This is fucking huge. Well, I mean, for the people that care about Rem, it is, but anyway. Another thing, who actually is Rui? I mean, we, we learned that she was born in the Corridor of Memories. I, I don't really understand that. I think the only explanation for this would be that the witch factor was inherited from her mother, and Rui is actually triplets with Roy and Lei, but... Rui was like a miscarriage or something and her soul still connected to the two that survived. I, I know it's kind of weird, but how else could you explain it? Maybe she read Reed's book and something happened. I don't know. There's a bunch of theories you could come up with. If you've got one of your own, let me know. But most importantly, what we got is that she's been defeated and Rem is coming soon, probably. Yeah, let me know what you think about this chapter below. And uh, thanks for watching my video. Um, subscribe to support the ReZero discussion, and have a great fucking day, alright? Take care.